Alright, so I have been eagerly awaiting these packages from Wiring Specialties. Uh, this one should be containing my uh, harness for a VBTI 2D um, and it's set up specifically for an E36 chassis so it should fit perfectly. Uh, We got our little wiring specialties catalog and some pinouts for uh, CAN bus, pinout for the ECU. So we've got our harness. It comes in several pieces. There's going to be um, a sub harness for like the coils. A nice grommet for where it goes through the firewall. Um, here's our O2 connector. The wide van also comes with some extra pins and stuff like that, just in case you mess some stuff up. And this guy is going to be our ECU. ECU Masters EMU Classic with Canvas. ECU Masters ECU are two plugs for the inputs and outputs. Um, that's what this, that's what the pin out that came with the harness was specifically for. So um, this little guy is for our manifold air pressure, and this is the CAN bus. So, it also comes with a bunch of extra pins and your uh, cable for the computer. All right, so this is the drift car. This is my 1996 E36 328IS 2JZ GTE VVTI engine. Now I've already removed the old harness, so this should be relatively easy to install the new one. So the first thing you're going to do is remove the upper part of the intake manifold. I've already removed mine because I removed the harness earlier. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is kind of take a look at the harness, drape it over the motor, and start to um, read some of these wires and figure out where exactly on the engine they're going to go. Um, I'm going to have to feed this guy through behind my intake manifold right next to the brake booster. And most of these guys are going underneath the intake manifold or feeding through the intake manifold and going to the injector. So that's where I'm going to go with this. Now some of these I'm not going to be using like flex fuel and oil temp. Um, as soon as I have provisions for those things, I can obviously plug them in, but for, for right now I'm just going to be coiling them up and uh, zip tying them so they're out of the way, so I can use them later. Alright, so one of the first wires I'm coming to is our knock sensor, which is right about here. All these, all these wires are labeled real nicely so you can pretty much figure out where everything goes with relative ease. Alright, that's the first, first plug, only 900 to go. Now, I've got a couple of grounds as well as the starter wire and the signal wire for the starter. So those two I'm just going to leave down there. I'm going to wait until I jack up the car to do that. We have a ground that's going to go to the intake manifold up here and the rest of these wires are just going to get fed in between the runners on the intake manifold and go to the injectors. And the can position sensor. 
Alright, our next bunch of things is uh, we've got another crown. Also we're gonna go to the antique manifold. A couple of detector wires. And then our number one knock sensor wire. Our number three detector. All these in between the runners on the inside of the vehicle. The API solenoid wire. The number two objective here. I'm just going to put a bolt through these two grounds so I don't forget about them later. bundle is going to be going on the other side of the engine so it's just going to drape right through the middle in between the cam gears and the valve covers and on this one we have our loose solenoid which I won't be using yet plug for the alternator as well as the inlet air turn. temperature sensor. Then we have our alternator plug right here. Sometimes if, if you don't hear it click, you might as well give it a little tug just to make sure it Fully. And this is our crank position sensor. So the next thing I'm going to install is the sub harness for my coils using stock BBTI coils. There's only three plugs. Plug into the main one of these. 
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is connect the power wire as well as the signal wire to the starter. Yeah, I don't know. One's a power, one's a ground. And then there was another one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're all. I have a pin out for them and everything. Alright. And that's that. So, I'm back to work on the E36. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to drill a hole in the downpipe um, so I can put an O2 bung into it uh, because the stock O2 bung is not going to work because it's a, a two bolt kind of a thing instead of a normal thread in O2. So, um, it's the it's a Bosch wide band. So, you can install that now. Yeah. Alright, so it's important to remember to remove your uh, one of your battery leads just to make sure you don't fry anything uh, before welding anything on a vehicle. It's just a, a general general rule and um, I just waited for the O2 bung to cool down a little bit. Uh, but you don't need to worry about it too much because these things are designed to handle a thousand thousand plus degrees of heat so So as you can see right here, I uh, cut a hole in my little firewall cover plate here uh, so I could feed the rest of the harness. So I could feed the rest of the harness through the firewall without having to um, unplug anything. What? Uh, now that was my plan from the beginning, but if you plan to stick your harness through a hole uh, that's in your firewall, maybe like. Uh, the one down here right by your like where your battery cable comes through um, if you plan on sticking your harness through a hole like that then you might want to do it uh, in the beginning before you plug everything in um, you may or may not be able to feed it through afterwards I'm gonna get rid of all of this old wiring that went from my relay panel over to my ECU over there and uh, once I get all that removed, I will be able to wire up my flying leads and plug in the ECU. Here's the plug for the wideband O2 sensor. All I did was plug that in and, and kind of zip tie it out of the way so it wouldn't you know, fall in the exhaust and, and melt. Because I have all the coils plugged in already, I put on the coil cover and uh, next I should be able to put on the intake manifold and plug the last few things in. What I've been working on right now is the uh, harness interface connector. So um, basically this is the connector that has all the flying leads that are going to uh, be either an input or an output. So. Um, right now what I'm doing is determining what I do and do not need because I'm not running a lot of things that uh, this harness is capable of. So basically I don't have a tack, I don't have an a uh, air conditioning, I don't, I don't need a reverse. Um, I already have a coolant temperature gauge, an oil pressure gauge, and I don't have air conditioning and um, 
speed sensor is unnecessary and fuel pump trigger I already have that um, wired up to my relay panel so basically all I'm going to be using off of this uh, connector is these two wires and one is for start signal and the other one is for ignition switch 12 volt power uh, the black wire will go to my starter relay and the red wire will go to my ignition relay all right so we're on the home stretch i'm going to finish installing the intake manifold um, i got it mostly installed the other night uh, made sure none of None of the wiring was getting pinched in between there, which it almost did because, you know, there's some extra wiring uh, built into these harnesses so you have room for everything. Just in case you decide to cut it and, um, like, you know, put in different, different plugs or something like that for injectors and stuff. And um, I made a little mount down here that I'll show you in a minute, but uh, the ECU sits right here against right here against this wall kind of covering up that ugly hole a little bit alright so my little uh, diagram I got here um, so when you're looking at this Originally, I made the mistake of looking at this end of the plug and trying to figure out where these wires go, which none of them matched up. And then I realized that I had to look at this side of the plug, the harness side, like the uh, the side directly connected to the harness that you can't remove. So um, that's what you should be going off of. And it says the black wire all the way over on the left. Black start signal, and that's A. So this one's, this one's A and it's black, you follow that through the plug. This is the corresponding wire. So what I'm going to do is put a terminal on this guy as well as uh, put a terminal on these two guys which this one is from my harness for ignition and this one is from the wiring specialties harness for ignition. So both of those are going to go to the ignition relay. So one last thing before we hop out of here, I'm going to uh, attach this vacuum line to the ECU. There's a little little port right here for um, the manifold air pressure. So uh, instead of running the manifold air pressure with a plug directly off of the manifold, this ECU has a built-in four or four and a half bar uh, sensor. All you have to do is run a vacuum line to it. So the last couple of things I'm going to do are hook up this vacuum line, which we just fed through the firewall. Just got to cut it to the length and pop it on.
and I installed that on, uh, where the original manifold air pressure sensor was, but you can install it anywhere on the uh, intake manifold. Um, I'm also going to add a couple of these little caps to some of these openings where there were vacuum lines, but we're not using them anymore. If you're not doing a true, uh, true twin setup as far as the turbos go, uh, then you might not have to do that, but if you are, if you, are you will. Alright, so um, what I've got is a 2JZ GTE VBTI um, in an E36, and I've got the wiring specialties uh, harness for this chassis, an ECU Masters EMU Classic and the uh, harness is also set up to work along with my relay panel that I have here uh, for the switch panel. So um, the way you, the way I did it is feed the wiring through the firewall, um, remove the top half of the intake manifold so you can reach all the plugs and stuff, unplug all the old stuff, uh, plug in the new stuff, uh, injectors, cam sensor, the throttle position sensor, as well as uh, knock sensors and the starter wire, all of which would be in there but you can't see it. Um, in the air temperature sensor, this is uh, not a sensor but it's the actuator for the VVTi. Um, you have the coolant temperature and the alternator and crank sensor that are down there. Um, and I had to add an O2 bung to my exhaust, but I, you know, screwed in the O2, uh, the wideband and plugged in the O2 sensor. And, um, all of these little extra things are just that, they're extra. So, I could run a, um, flex fuel as well as oil pressure and temperature and, um, fuel pressure off of all those plugs. So I'm not going to use those for right now, but I might later, so it's good to have them. I've also got the uh, vacuum line that I ran from the ECU all the way to the in, you know, intake manifold, so that get, gets rid of my MAP sensor completely. And um, if you're running a different ECU, you might not have that, but you might run a MAP sensor, an aftermarket one. So, I have everything all plugged up, um, ready to go. There's the chassis ground for the harness, and uh, looks like we're ready to tune it. So I'm going to call up our tuner guy, Ian, and he's going to get the ECU all set up, and uh, we'll do a couple of street pulls and get it to a nice, safe tune, and hopefully we won't run into any issues. So. I'll keep you guys updated and um, we'll get it all sorted out sometime this coming week. The ECU is all installed as well as the wiring harness. Um, the last thing we got to work on is the tuning. So our guy Ian sent me a startup map. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first step is to download the ECU software so we can actually use the computer um, and then as soon as we get that software downloaded um, you can just go to their website to find that whatever ECU you have you can just uh, go to their website and download whatever software it is unless they send a like software disk with the ECU so uh, the next step would be connect the computer to your ECU and uh, put in the startup map so that's what I'm going to do next Hey guys, so we finished up the tuning process on the BMW and um, got it all put together, got it tech ready, and finally it made its way to the track. Uh, we just got back from Sonoma Raceway. We're cleaning up some tires and everything, but the wiring specialties harness worked flawlessly. Um, I was really happy to get it out of the out of the shop for the first time in a while because I was dealing with electrical issues. So. If you are thinking about getting a harness, I would highly recommend a wiring specialties harness. It cuts out all, all of the problems that you could run into. So uh, I hope this video has helped you guys out. And if you have any more questions on the install, you can always go to 
wiringspecialties.com and they have a full comprehensive guide on how to install their harness. Um, yeah, hope you guys like it. Thanks.